Hi students, Nate Scharf, our first lecture, chapter 14, accounting. I like to kick off the course with a lecture on accounting because I think it's helpful for students to have a baseline understanding of the finances and how a company runs profitably, and that'll help inform the rest of the concepts that we learn throughout the semester. So we need to remember that no profit means no business. So companies have to turn a profit and the way they measure their performance and keep themselves in check, not spending too much on this, not too spending too little here, is through the numbers that they get through their accounting procedures. You'll notice I also have a logo here for Tesla in the upper right of this slide. There's a couple thought questions in the lecture that independent study, not graded, but if you wanna go and look up Tesla's numbers on some of these concepts, feel free to do so. So OER textbook in this course, which means that all of your terms are digital and I provided your links here. So you see, basically we wanna understand the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of cash flows. Those are the three basic financial statements. And then we'll look at some baseline ratio analysis. Now those are you that are stock investors, you might already know a lot in this area, and you can certainly go to any stock quote site, like a morningstar.com, and they will give you all these metrics, all these ratios about a company's performance on a variety of areas. I'm gonna to touch on some of those ratios at the end. And you're also looking behind the scenes at the financial statements that help create that ratio analysis that investors use. So know these second, third, and fourth bullet points, balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, and some of the baseline ratio analysis, that's what's gonna show up for you on quizzes. It's just a sidebar slide here. Internships, I can't stress these enough as a way to advance your career. Getting a LinkedIn account, there's all kinds of free certifications you can obtain these days. We have a career center here at Maricosta College that can help you obtain an internship. They're working to get more paid internships. So my career launched after I got a few internships under my belt and I started working for the companies that I interned at. So try to make time in your schedule for internships. The next series of slides, slides four through eight, I'm not going to lecture on these, but I like to provide information on each of the topics I'm covering from a career standpoint. So for example, what does an accountant do and how much do they get paid? So I've embedded what I call work-based learning in a few slides on each of the chapter lectures that we're gonna cover. So you can look at these slides uh, on your own but I'm providing some information about accountants as far as what they do in this slide, what the projected growth is for accounting as a career, how much they make. This is local data for San Diego County, and I had the Career Center pull this from their databases, such as Burning Glass, so this is current and accurate information. And then the skills that are required to be an accountant. And who's hiring here locally in San Diego? So you can look at these slides at your leisure. Again, the key terms from chapter 14, balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, and some financial ratios. Now I provided those in the previous slide where you had the actual links. And obviously you can always go to the resource page for whatever week we're working on. And you'll see the Open Education Resource OER digital textbook links to learn those terms there. So you'll get the lecture and then you should also circle back and read the definitions from the OER textbook as well. And they own, but here, you know, but owner's equity is like an asset, isn't it? So yes, but it's an asset that can't be liquidated. So current assets and long-term assets can be sold off and liquidated into cash if a company goes bankrupt. Owner's equity is, is uh, their piece that they own. All right, so balance sheet, what you own versus what you owe. It's expensive. 
or their operations are really expensive. Either salaries are too high or their rent is too high, etc. So the income statement tells us if you're making or losing money. The third financial statement is your statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flow tells you where is your money coming from? Money that's coming in and going out from the business, where is it coming in and where is it going out? And the three main categories are operations, investments, and financing. You might think, well, isn't it all operations? I mean, every business is selling something. That's how they make their money, right? But if you look at, a, say, a, a for-profit four-year university, it takes a, a Ivy League school like a Harvard, and you'll find out that the amount of income that Harvard generates from operations, meaning tuition from students, as a percent of all the money they make, is actually really low. They get a lot of their money from endowments and from investing in startups that uh, students end up going out and uh, launching. Um, and if you're a car company, you're selling the car, but you have a financing division. So customers are actually paying a loan on that car and you're making money through financing. So companies can make money from the product or services that they offer and make or from investments that they make if they're savvy investors with uh, their profits. Um, or financing deals, you know, particularly with uh, loan terms for customers. So there's a think about question, where is Tesla generating its cash flow? And on the previous slide, I forgot to mention, is Tesla making a profit? The answer is no, but it'd be interesting to look at that to see, to see is Tesla making a profit. So where does Tesla generate cash flow? If you click on this link, it'll take you to Morningstar.com. And it'll, with a little digging around on that site, you'll see where they make money from actually operations versus investments versus financing. And what comes out of the cash flow statement is the cash flow, which is the difference between cash coming in and cash going out of a business. So cash coming in at the beginning of the year for Harvest Gold, 700. Cash going out, cash balance at the end of the year, $15,000. That's not much of a wiggle room. A common problem small businesses and startup businesses have is they have cash flow problems. They've got a great business, lots of customers, um, but they're barely making payroll. They've got a cash flow problem because uh, the money's not coming in fast enough for them to turn it around and pay people. So those are your three financial ratio, your three financial statements: balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows. Then you get into your financial ratios. So this is the metrics that investors and analysts use to measure the financial health of a company, and they're in these main categories. Liquidity ratios means simply if we had to liquidate the company, can we uh, pay off their debts? Leverage ratios, we understand this, right? <laughs> some, some students might be more leveraged than others. I mean, I got this stuff, I got this car, I got this apartment, I got these rims, and I'm totally um, leveraged to the hilt. I got all this debt for this stuff, which means your assets aren't really assets. They're more debt. Um, and then profitability, are you turning a profit? So income statement. And then we can even look at the market value of what is the company worth. Momentary blip there. We see that total current liabilities are $288,000. So you want to have a ratio above one, which means in this case for Harvest Gold, their current ratio is 2.08. That means for every dollar that Harvest Gold makes, I'm sorry, for every dollar in liabilities, that Harvest Gold has, they have $2.08 in assets if they have to pay off those liabilities. So a current ratio below one is a problem. That means they have more liabilities than they have assets. So here they're okay, they're looking healthy. The other ratio is quick ratio. Quick ratio takes out inventory we see inventory here and look at the inventory number for harvest gold 
their inventory number out of that total 600,000 in current assets, inventory is 335,000 of that. It's over 50% of their cash. Banks oftentimes will look at the quick ratio, cash and cash equivalents, things that they know that they can quickly convert to cash right now to pay off liabilities if a company goes bankrupt. Because companies, if you think about it, they don't like to be in the inventory business. And if Harvest Gold went bankrupt and it was turned back over and the bank had to sell off all their assets and they're sitting on $335,000 of uh, quinoa and spices and all these other um, inventory items, it's, you know, inventory, it's tough to, to liquidate that stuff. So they like to look at quick ratio. If we ran the quick ratio for Harvest Gold, we would see that the number is different. So if you back out the 335 from the 600, we have 265,000 in current assets over the same current liabilities of 288,000. That is 0.92. That tells us that if they had to liquidate Harvest Gold uh, without the inventory piece, they don't have enough cash to pay off their liabilities. They, for every dollar of liabilities, Harvest Gold only has 92 cents in cash. So a quick ratio below, below one means the company needs more cash to pay off its debt. So what's a healthy current ratio? Certainly above one. Typically two to one is good, but it varies by industry. So you can click on that link here and learn more about some of the different um, ratios for different industries. So that's a liquidity ratio. If we have to liquidate the company, can we pay off their assets? My apologies, my mouse is a little sensitive here. Total liabilities is $613,000 right here. And their total assets are 826,000 here. So if we we want to know um, how much of their assets are actually things they don't really own, but they have a loan against them uh, on their building or their equipment, and their leverage ratio is 0 0.74. What that means is for every dollar value of assets that they have they're financed with 74 cents in debt. So they don't really own their assets. They have a liability, a debt on those assets. The close, so you wanna see a, a leverage ratio that's close to zero, which means we own our stuff outright. We own our building, we own our equipment outright. Um, we don't have any debts related to our assets. In this case, they're at 0.74. All right, and then we look at our profitability ratio. We have gross margin and net margin. Gross margin is your gross profit divided by your net sales. Here we see net sales of $700,000. That's money coming in, less discounts and returns, divided by the gross profit of 290. So what's, and basically it's putting a percentage. We can see that 290 is more than 50% of $700,000. So they're roughly like 60% gross margin. Most companies try to have a gross margin of above 50%. A really low gross margin means that your um, cost of goods sold, like your ingredients or your raw materials are really expensive. Net margin, here we see 49,000 here. Your net income, your, it's your net income divided by your net sales. So net income is 49,000 divided by those sales of 49,000. So 700,000 in, 49,000 in actual profit. This is a really low net income number. I'll let you crunch that number, but it's under 10%. So for every dollar that comes in, they're making less than uh, you know, 10 cents on the dollar as far as money coming actually in. So think about that. What does that tell us? A net margin below 20% means for every dollar that comes in, 
we're getting less than 20 cents on the dollar. Um, if you were the owner of Harvest Gold Restaurant and you worked all year really hard, paid your staff, did all the work, you had this much in sales, $700,000, and you put in your pocket at the end of the year only $49,000, you probably wouldn't be very happy, right? So that's not a very good net margin. So that tells us how much money did the company actually pocket at the end of the day. Price to earnings ratio. This is a great metric for evaluating a company's stock price against competitors in their industry. So you see I have a link here for Tesla, the price to earnings ratio. And I'll give you an example. If you had a company that had a PE ratio of 34.46, and we're not talking about Harvest Gold anymore, so this is just, um, put this in your noggin, it's just a hypothetical. If you had a, uh, a stock that was at 34.46 price to earnings ratio, that means you pay $34.46 for every dollar of actual earnings that the company makes. It basically, the PE ratio price of the stock of the company, the stock, selling stock, the price of the stock in relation to how much the company is actually making in earnings. It tells you how inflated is the stock price versus the money the company's actually making. So a high PE ratio is bad, not good. It means that the stock price is inflated versus what they're actually making. So if you were looking at three car companies, Tesla, Ford, Chevy, and Tesla's PE ratio is 150, Ford is 50, and Chevy is 25, Chevy's the best buy. It means for their stock price is only 25 times their actual earnings, whereas Tesla's stock price is 150 times actual earnings. So think of it as this, the P-E ratio is, an, is a measure of how inflated the stock price of a company is versus their actual earnings. So you can look up some of these on your own, but it's a nice metric to use if you're a stock investor, you can look at P-E ratios and get an idea of how hyped, how inflated is a company's stock price versus um, the actual earnings that they make. All right, my friends, so that recaps the uh, accounting chapter. To review, balance sheet is what you own versus what you owe. Income statement is are you making or losing money, profit or loss. Statement of cash flow is where is your money coming from, operations, investments, or financing. And then some of the financial ratios the company used to evaluate the financial health of the company, current ratio, gross margins, PE ratio. Okay, thank you for listening. That covers chapter 14. You do have a Canvas homework assignment this week. That's posted in the week one module. You can look down to that. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is actually create your own income statement for yourself. Do not use your actual numbers of money that you make or not making. We're gonna use a plus and minuses system uh, to see where you're at on an income statement. So it helps. Some of us don't look at our finances because it's depressing, but it's good to be aware um, and knowledge is power. So I encourage you to get um, familiar with your own finances and an income statement can help you with that. That's your Canvas assignment. That's it folks for chapter 14. Thanks for listening. Any questions, hit me in the Canvas inbox. Thank you so much.